All right, it's a Seth Dark Arts, and I'm back once again. You know the rest. 16 video, and this is for everyone out there, YouTube universe, wherever you're at, watching this. All my brothers and sisters out there. Now, wow, where do I start today? You know me. There's always something going on. Just finished meditating, deep, deep trance state, in the bathroom, in the tub, two hours. That's how I get down. <laughs> now, yeah, there's so many different ways to shift that consciousness and to get out and go into these other worlds. Um, I'll share just one technique with you right now that I usually do. And as always, this is just how I do it. Anyone else can either follow this way, use it, or modify it, or improvise on it. Um, if it doesn't work, there's nothing I could really say. Um, but try to find what, a way that works for you, because this is what works for me. Now, what I like to do is, I like to run the bath water get that tub real hot, make the water real hot and steam, as hot as I can take it. And then, I like to shut off all the lights, it has to be dark, pitch black darkness. Once I get into the tub, I visualize that hot steam and water is burning off all of the, I don't want to say negative energy because it, there's no negative and positive, everything is just energy. But all that energy that I don't want, that I picked up through the course of the day or the week, um, I visualize that hot water as burning it all off, off of me, as I settle into that water. And once I start to sweat, I see that as all that energy just coming out of me, detoxing myself, letting it all pour out to the pores of my skin and drip into that water. And... As that process is happening, I close my eyes and go deep using the inner senses. I touched on the inner senses before. Um, go back to the fifth video and I brought them up. I may have touched on them in another one, but I know I started talking about them in the fifth video. But yes, you need to use those inner senses to get out of, if you're trying to get out and shift realms and go into other places. Um, but yeah. I use those inner senses and I go deep, deep within myself. And this is how one way when I start to travel the other worlds and to see what's going on. And there are many different ways, reasons why I do this. Another reason is to strong, strengthen my mind. Um, for myself only, I realize that if I'm able to maintain my consciousness and be in a tub of hot water, it takes a very strong mind to break, not break loose, well maybe break loose, but to separate yourself from the fact that you're sitting in a tub full of hot water, and you're also sweating, and at the same time, you're trying to shift your consciousness and go into other realms of reality. If you can do that, then you have no problem doing it under any other situation as far as noise or, you know, crowded areas. Now, I know I'm sitting in the bathroom and it's quiet, <laughs> but this is more of a mental endurance type of exercise for myself to keep myself cool under pressure, especially for the summertime. When the summer comes, I notice a lot. Of, I had to stop doing this myself um, a long time ago. A lot of people, they keep it, oh, it's hot. Oh, it's hot. It's hot. And one day I realized just how stupid I, I sounded because I felt like, yeah, all right, I know it's hot, but why do I have to keep saying it's hot? And for myself, I saw that as a sign of weakness, mental weakness up here, um, and psychological weakness because I know that it's hot, but why do I have to keep emphasizing? If I keep stressing that it's hot, it's hot, oh my God, it's hot, then guess what? It becomes even hotter. So that's a little mental exercise that I throw at all of you that you could experiment with, experiment with on your own time and see how it works. But it has helped me during the course of the summer where 
unable to keep cool even under the hottest of temperatures. No matter if, if it's blazing hot outside and I'm directly in the sun, I am able to maintain my composure and maintain myself and maintain my, my consciousness so that I'm not stressing out about how hot it is. Yes, I know it's hot, but I don't have to keep saying it every five minutes. And a lot of people do that. And if you're trying to do without the things I'm talking about in these videos, then that's a little something for you to work on. If you have one of those little habits that keep saying it's hot, it's hot every ten seconds. <laughs> so yeah, today, hmm, what am I going to touch on for everybody? All right, I know what. You all remember the story when I went into my videos about Toda, the talking tiger. That's right, folks, he talks. <laughs> but yeah, man, I had my experience with... Now, Toda, like I said before, Toda actually means tiger in Japanese. So when I went out into this other realm one time, I came across paths. I crossed paths with this tiger. He told me his name was Toda, and he started explaining his world to me and giving me some deep information. And it's funny how you start connecting dots when you start going into these realms and deep inside yourself. You start connecting um, different just points that you didn't really necessarily, you didn't actually pay attention to them before, but you start sitting down going, hmm, wait a minute, this connects. So I've noticed in a lot of experiences for many years, when I would go into these other realms, um, I noticed that sometimes when I would cross into them, semi-conscious kind of, or unconscious, like I knew I was there but not fully there, um, anytime I would come across something that would appear to be like, I don't know if you want to call it demons or this kind of stuff, or so-called negative energy, the things that... <laughs> What I wasn't really interested in experiencing at that time that seemed bigger than me at the moment. I've always noticed that I kind of resorted, kind of went into this animal state. And it was always like a roar that I would let out, like a tiger. It was a big roar and it seemed like a type of subconscious defense mechanism that I picked up that... Just say, for example, if I came across some type of monster or something like that, or if it was a gang of people trying to team up on me and I was outnumbered, I always re went back into this kind of animal state where I was roaring, I would let out a loud roar, and they would kind of pause and it would scare them. And then I would attack them, but I would be in the form of an animal. Attacking, like slashing with my claws and biting and stuff like that. But I never actually had the animal form, which was sounds kind of interesting, but I would be in the form of my body, but roaring like an animal. And I never thought much about it, but I thought, well, that's interesting. And then came Toad of the Talking Tiger many years ago, and I started putting some key elements together, and I realized that you hear them talk about, you hear some people talk about totem animals or spirit animals or spirit guides. And I came to the conclusion that this was one of these so-called spirit guides or animals that contacted me was this tiger form. And this year, he's really been coming to me a lot. Now, what makes this interesting for me is that I'm not really... I mean, I love animals. I love all animals. Um, but I'm not sitting around on YouTube or, you know, sitting there watching tiger videos going, okay, tigers, tigers. So... That's not really the, it's not on my mind at all. So, with the first time this thing came to me, when, when he came to me, Toda, and started speaking to me, it was kind of out of nowhere. And that's what makes you think about these things. Now, if I was sitting down watching YouTube videos and movies about tigers, and then I had an experience with a tiger, okay, I would say, all right, well, I was influenced by that. But when he first came to me, it was completely out of left field. And I thought, well, what the hell was that <laughs> at the time? But he's been coming to me more and more. And if you go back to my other videos where I talked about him. But recently, I had a real powerful experience, man. I know, here he goes again with the powerful experience. <laughs> but yeah, it is what it is, man. So I 
went out of body, I was in this other stair, shifted consciousness, and I was in this reality where there were some guys, man, they were trying to kidnap my mother. And you know how it is with mothers. Don't touch my mother. <laughs> you know how it is. Everybody loves their mother, man. It's a weak spot for people. And I was in this place, and these guys, these cats were trying to take my mom, man. And I love my mother, man. So I was like, yo, what's going on here? And they outnumbered me. And they were planning on kidnapping her. And as they were plotting this out, my mother was in this bedroom. <laughs> Told her I came. He came out of nowhere. And he came to me. And he did something quite interesting. He kind of taught me how to shapeshift. It's really hard to explain, but he kind of gave his knowledge to me. It went into me. And he basically gave or taught me the ability to turn my, if you want to call it an astral form, to shapeshift it into a tiger. So this all happened very quickly, but I can't explain. It's just like an instant download and a telepathy going on. But he gave this to me. So my mother was in this room. I think I told her to move or to hide or get under the blankets with me. And when these men came into the room, they had guns and stuff. I jumped under the blankets as well. And when they threw back the blankets, I was a tiger. <laughs> And, yeah, man, pretty wild, I know. But they all, they freaked out. They jumped back. And I let out one of the loudest roars that a tiger would make ever. I mean, it was truly, like, I, at that moment, I felt the power of a tiger. I mean, it was there. And they tried to run, and I jumped out the bed and leaped on them. And I started slashing them with my claws and biting them. And one guy tried to run. I started chasing him. I was chasing him through this hallway. And as I was chasing him, I caught a glimpse. Now, I was running on all four. I was a tiger. But as I was chasing him down, I caught a glimpse of myself, my reflection through a mirror, through a window. And I was in human form. So at that moment, I was in a tiger form, but through the reflection, I was in my human form. And I thought, I still wanted a piece of this guy. <laughs> I wasn't letting him get away for trying to hurt my mother. Now, at this time, of course, I was aware that I was in another realm, and this was not my actual mother on this side. But then again, hey, you never know. It could have been my mother. Um, these things do happen, and it's possible that she crossed over as well. I'm not going to get into that now, but as I always say, these things go so deep and become technical that there's so many variations of things that are possible and that could happen. So when I do cross into these realms... Even if I know I'm in another reality, I still take it as my mother, my father, my brother, my friend. I treat them with the same, the same feeling and extend out to them. Whether or not they are reflections of my own creation or, or whatever you want to call it, they still, I still have the same love for them. So, yeah, <laughs> to any energies out there, you come into my world when I'm out of body trying to touch my family or friends. I'm going to come at you the same way as I would on this side. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I'm chasing this guy down, and I finally got a hold of him, and I told him a new one. <laughs> and dealt with him as I saw fit. I'm not going to go into the gory details, but let's just say it wasn't pretty. Imagine a tiger on someone. <laughs> yeah. That's how it go down. That's how it went down, anyway. But, yeah. So... That's what I wanted to touch on, these animal spirits, man. They really do come at you. And you have to pay attention. You have to really pay attention. Now, I feel very happy for myself because I don't want to go on an ego trip or anything right now. I'm the king. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but no, man, it really makes me feel good that this tiger energy really extended out to me because it's like, wow, man. You know, this is, this is something for my own personal self to work on. Um, and for my own personal self to delve into even more, but it's opening up new doors of exploration for me as far as why would this tiger energy come at me? Um, why did he see me as, you know, the energy to make contact with? Why did he make himself known to me? Why did he teach me this new ability? 
Um, and why did he let me into his world? See, that's the thing, too. Um, we're not just the only ones manifesting all this stuff. When certain elements come to you, when you are in different modes of, of thinking of the mind and areas of consciousness, consciousness exploration, um, you have to ask yourself, why did this thing contact me? Am I contacting it? Or is it contacting me? And if it is contacting me, why? What does it want? What's its goal? Does it have an ulterior motive? Um, now, I'm not trying to scare, scare anybody. I told you before, we're all powerful, so I'm not trying to make people think of something's out to get you or trying to kill you or possess your body and none of that nonsense. But it does open up the idea of why did it decide to come to you? Did I have something special that it saw? Did I know it in another life? And as I said, all lives are happening now simultaneously. So if I did know him, that means I do know him right now. And that opens up the realm of well, where do I know him from? And what reality do we know each other in that I'm not picking up on right now, but he has made the effort to break through into mine and make contact. So. Those are just some things to keep in mind for yourselves. If you come in contact with unusual animals, strange animals, mythological animals or creatures, or beings or people or entities or energies or anything, and if they're coming at you, one question should be is, are you manifesting this? <laughs> or is it manifesting you? <laughs> There's always that. Who's manifesting who? Or, why is it coming to you? These are things you need to ask yourself. Now, I've already gone deep, and I'm still going deep into myself, getting these answers. And I'm not going to reveal my information. And it's not because of I have some secret knowledge that I can't share. It's more of, I don't want to give anyone any preconceived ideas. So I don't. sometimes, some things I don't want to share with people, because... I want people to come to terms with their own stuff and then come back and tell me what they experience and then we will start finding some similarities. But if I give too much information on certain subjects, then people won't think for themselves and they'll just take what I say at face value and they'll start basing their experiences off of my experiences and then nobody's going to get anywhere. So, like I said, I'm not saying that I'm better than anybody. And I'm not saying that I have some secret power that I'm not sharing. It's more of, I want you to have your own experiences and then find out what's going on for yourself. Now, as I said before, I am the best. I am the greatest. You know that already. I'm a dark artist and a god in training. No one can touch me and nothing can hurt me. But I'm also coming to you on the level of equality. So we're also equals and we're also brothers and sisters. So I am the best. I'm the best dark artist that I know. <laughs> because I'm the only dark artist I know. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, I am I am the most powerful being in the universe. But guess what? So are you. Well, let me rephrase that. I am one of the most powerful beings in the universe because there are many. There are many, many others, and I'm just one of them, and so are you, if you believe that. And it's up to you. Do you want to buy into that idea? It's very empowering. It's much better than we're all sinners and, you know, we're nothing but the bottom of someone's shoe. We're all sinners and we're going to go to hell. I find that a lot more liberating to call yourself a god in training or the, one of the most powerful beings in the universe. Hey, to each his own, choose your terms, but um, this is the one I'm going to stick with because it works for me and it's been keeping myself above the rest and on my A-game. So that's right, I'll continue being the most badass dark artist that ever existed. But yeah, let me get back to what I was talking about. So yeah, that's what I wanted to say about animal spirits or animal energies that... 
may make contact with you. Um, it may not be an animal, it could be something else, it could be anything, but just in my experience, Toda has really been coming through, man. He's really been making contact with me and really been making himself known to me, especially this year. Um, last year and this year, he's really been coming through. And he always comes through when I'm in some experience where things are getting a little out of hand and, or if I'm outnumbered by something or, if, you know, things just look a little grim. He comes bursting through out of nowhere, manifests, and as I said, I'm very excited because recently he has given me that ability to use his power. So, hey, I appreciate it. Now, something I want to touch on, um, well, I'll tell you this right now anyway. Once you start getting into these things and getting deep into yourself, um, Something interesting happens, and I don't think I've touched on this before, but I'm going to touch on it now. Um, you start to download information into yourself, even when you're not thinking about this stuff. It just starts coming into you out of nowhere. And when you start utilizing these inner senses, like I keep stressing, you start tapping into this energy. And once you understand that you're a multidimensional being, and you understand these other realities exist, and that you exist in many other realities, and that you have probable selves and so-called reincarnational selves, which are probable selves in terms of time and error. You start pulling in information from all these different areas, man. So, just example, you could be in the middle of a basketball game or watching um, a movie or listen to a song and suddenly boom you will get information and it can come there's two ways it can come to you it can come as a stream of information as if someone's just speaking it to you into your mind sometimes it's your own voice you hear or it can come to you in blocks now for me in the beginning it used to come to me in streams of information that's why I say write everything down you gotta write these things down because you might tap into some real some real good information. So in the beginning for me, it used to come in a stream and it was my inner self telling me this stuff. And like I said, sometimes it would sound like my own voice, but it would be giving me information that I know is not my my information that I've learned on my own and completely out of nowhere. And I would just grab my notebook, start writing down, writing down, nonstop. And when I finish I read it, oh damn the hell is this man this is some real deep stuff that I don't know where it came from but as you advance more and make yourself more powerful you start getting blocks of information when I say block it's like man sometimes you're just sitting down and it's like boom an instant download into your mind and you just have all this information going on that you just pulled in from out of nowhere and all you can just write it down you write it all down exactly how you see it. Um, I'm trying to think of a way to ex explain it, but just imagine, this is a very bad example, just imagine, for example, a whole paragraph or a page of information on a subject, and some, suddenly it just goes from the page directly into your mind, and you have it at that moment. Everything. You, didn't even, you did not even think about this. You never read, knew anything about this information, nothing related to this information, it just suddenly downloaded into you. Now this is the level that you need to be trying to get to. And everybody out there who's watching this, this is what you need to be focusing on. So yeah, I have, man, I have so many things written down, it's unbelievable. Um, I used to write a lot on these notebooks and pieces of paper everywhere. Then I started writing in my book. Then um, I started using my iPad because it was much faster to type. Because I used to write all this stuff down and I would just get this information in a trans state or just out of nowhere. It would just hit me and I write it all down. And when I finish and go back, I couldn't read my own handwriting, man. <laughs> it looks like another language. Sometimes it was another language. But yeah, I said, man, I have to. Because um, I was writing it down so fast, you know. So it's like, man. So I decided to write things down through the iPad and then transfer it to paper. 
Now, a little hint to people who are doing that. I'm experiencing the same problem right now. It is nice to write these things down quick in digital format, but <laughs> what happens is you need to make sure you actually transfer that down to paper for two reasons. Reason number one, digital format can always easily be destroyed, lost, deleted, and just gone with the wind. <laughs> paper lasts much longer. And I know people are going to say, what are you talking about? Digital lasts longer. Yes, it does, but you need a source of electricity to keep that going. And if you don't have that, what are you going to fall back on? So it's always good to have a hard copy of your thoughts and information you pull in from these other realms and from your records, your inner records. And the next point, the second reason number two why you have to Oh, I just lost my. Well, the, the second point I want to make is that when you write all these things down, you have to make sure that you actually transfer it down to paper because if you don't, what happens is you have, like me, you have all. Let me just show you an example, man. So y'all know I'm not BSing here. I don't have anything to prove, but this is more for your own entertainment and mine. I'm just going to show you an example. I write, document, and date so many things. Now this here, this is my iPad. I don't know if you can see this clearly. Let's see here. I've got a screen here. And basically, I'm going to scroll down. All this stuff that you see here, this is all information that I've been writing down every day and things that I get that come to me. And it just keeps going and going and going. It's an endless stream. And look at that. The bar is still at the bottom for look. I'm just streaming, 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 going down, going down, going down, going down. And that's just one page. And that's on my iPad. And that's all information that I get in my own thoughts, stuff that comes out of nowhere on so many different subjects. So <laughs> my point is I got to transfer all that down the paper. <laughs> and because I fell off and got so relaxed and writing it just digital, boom, 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 all right, this is you typing it down. Now I got to take the time to transfer all that information onto paper in a book. So that's something I have to do. But yeah, so don't fall into that trap if you are using your iPad. <laughs> um, now, this is something that came at me the other day. I was on the train. Well, actually, I've got two things that I want to throw at you. This is one that came at me. And every once in a while, I like to just share a little something that came at me. Um, one of them was in, pertaining to darkness, and the other one, well, this came at me yesterday, yeah, so I wrote down, you know, April 5th, 2013, 10 a.m., so this hit me at 10 a.m., out of nowhere, I'm doing something completely unrelated, and boom, it just downloaded into me, and I started typing, and it's not an automatic writing, people say that's automatic writing, it's not automatic writing, this is something beyond on another level besides automatic writing. This is more of automatic writing is, you know, you go into a trance or you just start writing and then you don't know where you're writing. When you look down, there it is. This is on a different level. This is more of it all comes to me at once and then I have to actually sit down and write it out. And as I'm writing this stuff down and typing it out, I know what I'm writing. I'm not in a trance state or anything like that. But I'm just typing it so fast that it's just it's just flowing out of me. It's flowing. And information and energy is flowing. So I wrote this down. Um, the reality of your so-called past, present, or future could be shifted at any time, and it could also change the reality of other people who are connected with it. However, they do have the choice to accept or reject your new version of events. This can happen on a much larger scale, even more effectively, through the suppression of certain important key elements or facts about a situation. For example, during a war, we do not know exactly what happened to trigger the war, but if the key elements are left out of the official story as to what happened, it would be easier for the reality of the situation to be manipulated and reshaped into a completely new, alternate reality of the actual situation. The people who were directly involved will reject the new reality shift because they were involved and know exactly what happened or at least have the closest version to the true nature of events that took place. 
Others who are not involved can easily accept the new reality ship as long as the new official version of reality comes from a respected person or trusted authority. Now, a lot of people are probably saying, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> All right, let me break it down in simple terms. Then. Basically, what I meant by that was, I went into spell work before. I talked about spell work, I think, in some video at some point, way back. And what spell work really is. And very simply, I said, spell work is nothing more than using your natural abilities to try to shift reality. And when you shift reality, it falls upon if these other people are going to buy into the new reality that you're trying to shift, or are they going to be strong enough to reject it? So when I talked about war, all right, this is a perfect example. We never know what happens exactly when a war starts. When a war kicks off, we have com we're completely clueless. We have no idea as to what actually happened. The media comes on and news tells us a version of events, but we don't know if that's actually what happened. I mean, they, they just tell us, this is what happened. Okay, that's what happened. Let's go to war. But we don't know what really happened. So, just example, you take what happened to the Native Americans. Um, very sad, you know, but you know, foreign powers came over and completely just annihilated them and destroyed the whole race and culture. Um, now, from the Western perspective point of view, it would be more of, hey, you know, we came in and we wanted to make, you know, create America and these Native people were preventing that from happening. And, you know, you know the story already. We know the history of what happened. Well, not the true history, but what they have sold us as the real history. But from the perspective of the Native Americans, it did not compl it did not play out that way. They were completely just I can't even go into the atrocities and things that were done to them and what happened to them. Completely unbelievable, but it happened. Their their point of view from the story is very different from what we've heard in textbooks. And I remember when I was in school hearing about Native Americans and how, you know, all that history stuff involving them and what happened, I thought, this is some bull, man, because this, you know, it just didn't make any sense. It was complete nonsense. So, I'm sure, and I know, their version of what happened from the elders at that time and even now were completely different from what we learned in school. Don't believe that school nonsense they taught you with the history textbooks. Um, but yeah, they were completely taken advantage of. Um, now, Back to what I was saying, you see how, from their perspective, that was a reality shift. Um, Westerners came in, they shifted their reality by forcing themselves onto their land and just taking it, basically, and overpowering them. And then, they, through history, as time went on, they sold us an official story. And that's what we get in school as children in Texas. They say, well, this is what happened with the Native Americans, see. Yeah, they might tell us our little things, like, you know, this happened, and yeah, they did kill a lot of Native Americans. And, but they don't go into detail what really went down and the true story of it. So, basically, the Native Americans got the bad end of the deal. And as time went on, <laughs> speeding up till now, they sold us an official line of complete bullshit, man, that had nothing to do with the actual story of how it played out. But... Because um, we were not connected to those events, we accept a new reality shift even easier. See what I'm saying? So because we weren't there, and so much so-called time has passed, and many generations have gone on, we just believe whatever is told to us. We say, well, yeah, that's what happened, and this is a story I learned in school, and hey, this is what played out. But it's actually nothing even close to what actually happened during that time. So... Yeah, this um, that information all came down to me in the flash of a moment. It just hit me. Boom! Grabbed my iPad. I started writing. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, I'm just looking it over one more time. But yeah, like I said, people who were not involved with that reality, um, we could easily accept a new official version 
of reality if it comes from a trusted person or an authority figure. So if authority figure meaning school, the government, whatever, whoever it is or whatever name you want to use, but if we respect these authorities, so-called authorities, and look up to them and say, well, what, why would they lie? School, man, they're not going to lie. It's in a book. It's in a textbook, man. What are they going to make this up for? But um, if you're watching these videos by now, you already know that. Then. So, yeah. So that's just an example of something I want to share on information being downloaded into you. Not automatic writing, completely different. And, uh, yeah, spell work. And what spell work really is, just a shifting of a reality. And if the other person wants to buy into that reality or not. Um, and the other thing that came at me was, now this was a little bit more, this is a little bit short, and this is more of my own thinking. Not really, I mean, it came at me. You see, this is the thing too, um, also, when you get into this stuff and start using your inner senses, um, you're able to accelerate your thoughts even faster. So, if you even think of one topic or one subject you want to dwell on, your mind, I'm trying to see how to explain it to anybody, but your mind shoots out into all these different areas and then it pulls back, contracts very quickly, and you just receive information on what you're thinking of, the 10 different perspectives or more at the same time. And then you filter through it and see what you want to use. But this is the true power, man. This is what I'm talking about. This is what everyone needs to be tapping into. This is what whoever else, so-called elites, don't want us tapping into. But yeah. Um, I was thinking about darkness. I was riding the subway. I was thinking about darkness. And like I said, you know, I keep going on darkness because I'm telling you, Darkness is where you have to go, man. If you want to tap into yourself, and get that energy, get those powers and these abilities, you got to go into yourself. And to go into yourself, you have to first go through the darkness. And I get... I'm sorry. I'm not getting angry here, but I just... I get so goddamn tired of this term. Light workers and spiritual beings of light and all this stuff. I'm not knocking anybody like I said in the last video you choose whatever terms you want whatever gets you going but the reason I chose to use Seth Dark Arts and I call myself a dark artist well not the main reason but one of the reasons anyway is because the darkness gets no love man you know darkness it gets such a bad but that end of the deal, man. Everybody looks down on darkness. They fear the darkness. They talk bad about it. It's linked with negativity, evil, evil spirits, demons. Nobody has any love for darkness. But I do. <laughs> I definitely do. Because if you want to get technical and start thinking about this, I have wrote down, this is not really organized, but just something to throw at you right, real quick. Um, I wrote down, I said, oh man, where is it? Hold up, hold up. Sorry, buddy. You know this happens sometimes. Yeah. I wrote down, I wrote, darkness is the true nature of reality. All light needs an alternative source of energy to maintain its energy source. But darkness simply just is. Where do you think darkness goes during the day or when the lights are turned on? It is exactly where it was left. It, it is exactly where it was before light appeared. It didn't go anywhere. Darkness is the natural state of reality, at least in physical reality, anyway. And I was just messing around, still coming up with some thoughts. But, yeah, man, if you think about it, everyone's so down on darkness and linking it up with evil and stuff. But check this out. I'm in this room right now, right? If I turn off the lights, it becomes completely dark. If I turn on the light, where does darkness go? It does not just magically disappear. The darkness is still here. It's still in this room. You just can't see it. But it's still here. I'm still sitting in darkness. Naturally, I'm in the dark. The light is not natural. This is not a natural source of energy. This is fueled by electricity and, you know, all these other things. But it's not natural. If that light bulb blew out right now, I will be here in the dark. The sun 
all right, the sun is there, and we have the sun, but the sun is being fueled um, by itself. But if the sun were to burn out and collapse or anything like that, where would we be? We would be in darkness. When the sun is not around, what is the natural state of, you know, the, the, side, the part of the earth that does not have the sun hitting it? It's darkness. When you look into the universe, what do you see? You see darkness. Yeah, you see lights from stars that are burning, but if those stars burn out, what happens? Right back to darkness. Darkness does not need, how do I say this? There is no artificial source of energy for darkness. Darkness just is. For light, you need to have a source of energy burning for it. Electricity or the sun, you have all these fuel and gases and all these things like that. Um, but, yeah, light is more artificial than darkness. If you want to talk about what's fake and what's the real power at and all that other stuff, um, yeah. Um, the darkness is where it's at, man. You know, when you close your eyes, what do you see? Darkness. It's the natural state of things. Darkness. So... That's just something for you guys to think about. I'm not going to go into it anymore, but yeah. Darkness is where it's at, baby. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Let me stop clowning around here, but I have to joke around sometimes. i got to keep these things light. I don't want to be one of these cats on the internet talking about, well, you know, this has to be this way because it's the esoteric knowledge and all that other bullshit. You know, i got to keep it light and fun, but also serious at the same time. Now, all right. I'm hitting the, I just hit the 41 minute mark. I don't want to go too crazy because you know me. I'll keep talking. I'll talk nonstop until tomorrow. So I got to cut this video short. Um, I touch on a lot of topics. Um, sometimes when I start these videos, I don't know where they're going to go. I just turn it on the camera and I might have some something on the side of where I want to go. But I'll start off on one subject, fly into another one, and then bounce right back. But that's all right. Spontaneity, that's what it's all about. Um, keep practicing. Don't let the haters keep you down. Don't worry about nobody. I'm very happy for everyone out there. I've seen a lot of good comments. People are getting busy. They're starting to practice, starting to talk to that inner self, starting to meditate more, keep doing it. Um, yeah. And... Make sure you found that name that works for you. Like I said, the term God, some people didn't like it. Hey, that's what I use, God in training. I never said I was God. Watch the video. I said God in training. I am a God in training. I'm learning to use my abilities. So when I leave this place and enter the other realms, I will have the upper hand over people who didn't do this stuff here. And I'm also a dark artist. Dark artist, go within myself into the darkness, that's where the power is at, I know it, and that works for me, hey, alright, peace, love, and harmony as always, and I'll catch you all next time, bye-bye.